week's episode is brought to you by Tabletop Backer Party on Facebook, which is the largest board game crowdfunding group on this side of the internet. Featured this week with our sponsors, we have Words with Gravity, which puts every smarty pants dictionary dweller in their place with a not so simple dexterity challenge. So, ha ha, not today, Grandma. We all know you can spell xylitol, but get that balanced perfectly on the board without tipping it over. And Mr. Java, which lets one to four players be the big boss and make executive decisions, paving the way for their company through worker placement and hand management by utilizing their unique workforce to win the game. Although keep in mind golfing is not included, it is thoroughly encouraged after the game. That's fair. Hello everyone. That's Welcome to I'd Back That Kickstarter with Glory Hound. Dr. Glory Hug. And Greg Dixon. And Wesley. The cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the door is open. We're leaving the door open today, Poor so thing. she will be joining us so today. We won't be like sweating. Uh, lots of cat butthole. I apologize. I need Ooh. to get one of those gems or something like that. <laughs> to cover it up. The gem that goes on their tail. Respect That's what you guys yourself, need, Wesley. Copious You're worth more than this. <laughs> just butthole. lay down. Just lay down. Don't lay don't down. look at her. She's gonna just stay up. So it's like. It's like it hit like 60 degrees in Arizona, so I'm already wearing long sleeves in the like house. Like, it's so yeah, chilly. I, I went to go it's look for flannel. It's 75 degrees in the house. <laughs> I don't own any flannel, <laughs> so I almost borrowed like some of hers. Just Not the, long sleeve flannel. I wanted to go for the flannel. <laughs> yeah, I was just like. Just tank top flannel. It's flannel time. <laughs> it's flannel season. And I already started my no-shave November. Oh. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, uh, uh. I also started my no-shave November. I it's could get my leg out rubber. here. Hold on. Like that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, you're such a flipper. <laughs> So I was thinking, you know what we should do? What should we do? We should have a No Shave November contest where somebody takes a picture today on this stream since it's November 1st. They take a picture of themselves, and then whoever has the biggest, bushiest, most ridiculous beard. Why is it just limited to beards? Well, We need leg hair, yeah, too. Sure. Like Whatever. I mean, the most it's about how much you can grow, grow right? Most, the most grow. Whatever I want to see rulers and measurements okay. out there. Right, you really want to get crazy? <laughs> Whatever hairy picture you want to send no, us. Whoa, no. No. You said no. it. I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. He says. <laughs> I tried to limit it to beards, but you know what? You want to get crazy, so whatever. Arm hair, oh my leg gosh. hair. You send those to. Um, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Well, that's all we're gonna back say. Back hair, I guess. We've given enough examples. Guys, I, I want you to send those to at Dr. Glory no, Hog no, on absolutely. Twitter. No. Okay. Um, I mean, it was your idea. Send it's them only directly fair there. That you get final say in oh. who wins yeah. the contest. He's, he's going to be just the judge. I'm saying that we should vote at the end of the month based off of who has like the you most should. impressive growth. You should. And then we should send them out a game or something. You know what? Take notes and like get back. To me on that, we okay? can send them out a <laughs> Glory Hound gift card, which is equal to 15 Stanley Nichols and about two Shroot Bucks <laughs> for you Office fans. All right, it looks like today we Shroot have a bunch bucks. of people in chat. Thank can you. Can I buy Beats with that? Oh, yeah. thank you so much They're for joining for beats. us. Beats by Shroot. And Bear Training. <laughs> we have Leo Lewis, Kabuki Kid, Martin Gardner. All the usual suspects. Eric is here as well. Rails, <laughs> goodbye. Off the rails already. Well, you know what? <laughs> Very clear. That's what the opening of our show is all about. We battle have battle cry. cry. <laughs> Listen, the rules are very clear. You just have to have some hair or no hair. And then grow some hair. And then measure from there. And then send us a picture, But I we guess. need a newspaper that shows the date. I wasn't going to be that <laughs> intense. <laughs> I was just going to send them one of your games what anyways. What if they started oh with my a big God. beard? But then they'd send a picture of themselves when they were like 12 with no beard. Or they, what you they know, we need, all we right, need all verification. Right. Hold on. One last thing. Last oh, by the way, goodbye, Rails. Yeah. They can have a really big beard now and then on the 1st of December shave it. And I'll count that, too. Oh, you want just extreme changes? I want extreme changes. It can go from big beer to... You know what? Screw it. Weight loss? Send wow. me the weight loss pictures. <laughs> I don't know. If you've grown a lot this again, month? Again, yeah. that's if you're still at in your growing phase. At Dr. Glory Hog on Twitter. Infant okay. Screw <laughs> it. I mean, worst case scenario, I can just delete that account. <laughs> there was no point in uh, Kabuki Kid. You know, it's, it's the no shave, no... November I'm thing. To save men's prostate. It's by like growing is a that beard. what it's for? It's I like so. is it for prostate? Ev it's I've never no, known. no. Here's what it is. It's every guy just gets like a card to be freely lazy in November, <laughs> and then they're like, "We're taking advantage I of don't this." I need that. I got that all year <laughs> round. If I didn't have work-related appointments, I would never shave. Battle cry. <laughs> You know, oh, Dr. Glory Hog says it can be wherever and yeah, to send Dr. him pictures. Dr. Glory Hog wants pictures of and all pictures. hairy regions of okay. our That is <laughs> not what I said. And what was that email again? Dr. Glory Hog? At Dr. Glory Hog. Yes. Hey, text. Yeah. Don't eat the nurse hat. 
Hey, that's your sister's hat. Hey, <laughs> <don't> text. <laughs> so much for that costume. <laughs> don't eat that hat. It's destroyed. It's destroyed. Okay. So let's get started on Kickstarters here. Do, do, do. First up, we have Dwarf Spring by Vesuvius Media. This is for two to four players. It's going to last about 25 minutes per a player. This is a worker placement game with a little bit of like strategic area control, not necessarily controlling the area. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of an odd area control because you're not controlling it to like necessarily fight other opponents, but just characters on the board and then strategic placement of your units and stuff. That's where you're going to need the area control of that. And when you are placing your meeples in this game, you are placing them either on the pedal boards there that they have the little hexagonal boards or in your little castle area. So I think that there's some really unique choices going on here. Greg, what were your first impressions of this game? It looks like a very light game because of the art. Oh, okay, okay. Like, I thought it was like a little kitty game at first, but I think there's more going on here. I think there's a, a decent amount of depth, a depth. It almost feels like they're trying to do like a munchkin kind of look to it, the art. I don't know. What do you how think? How dare you? No? No, I think you're right. I, I could see that. Very cartoony. Well, this is more cartoony than munchkin than like Well, this munchkin is their... Seems more hardcore. Maybe. This is their third installment so they have dwarves fall dwarves winter and this is dwarves spring I haven't played which any of these. dwarves fall is a different completely different game dwarves yeah. uh winter i believe is completely different i didn't check out dwarves winter but you know i originally got dwarves fall on this on from vesuvius media and i skipped winter so now we're into spring. Dr. Gloryhog, though, what do you think about this? Before I get to my commentary on it. Yeah, so when i looked at this i said, "Oh cool, another dwarves game." Um but it's going to be a super hard sell for me because when we got Dwarves Fall, what I remember of it is playing it twice and thinking, this is kind of too light and too random for me and kind of a hard pass. And I'm a guy who likes King of Tokyo. So I just felt like it didn't live up to the hype. We've already backed one of their games. I didn't, wasn't super impressed with it. It's not one that I've played since. It's been on my shelf for two years now or something. So I'm, I have to, like, it's going to be a hard sell. Okay. Yeah. So... And Martin says app g app game style art, yeah. and there the art on this is by like a comic book artist I believe, and I believe he has like a whole comic like devoted to this style art and something going on with that. I haven't done a whole bunch of research on the art on this. I I do like the art though overall. Yeah. I you think know? the art is good. I think it's yeah. fine, but it did sort of give you the feel that this was going to be very light. And so instantly I'm like, light worker placement, I have w a lot of those. You know what I mean? That's so true, you do. I'm kind of with you, like, we're the hard sell of, like, I don't know how, how light does this stand out? You the know? worker placement is going to be with the area control on the board because you have to make sure that you're building things adjacent to other things in order just to place things to get resources or to place right. things to fight certain things. But like that first impression is that, oh, this must be really light. Like, sometimes the art. I feel like you need to like have to match like it with needs it. To match. So if well, it goes both ways too because sometimes like that Euro art looks so boring, and you're like, this game is actually exciting. And yeah, fun. like right. Carpe Diem. Yeah, it's actually exciting. It's and fun. actually tense and exciting, and but the and art on the yeah. outside doesn't lead you to right. believe any right. of that. Well, I br I also remember playing Dwarves Fall, and the first off, guys, Dwarves Fall, the production value was excellent yeah, yeah we even got the play mat yeah we even got the play mat everything looked amazing the only issue that i had with dwarves fall was the fact that during gameplay i couldn't quite place like exactly what was wrong i was like i'm oh. not like excited to be doing these things i'm almost like why am i doing these just things kind of mundane or yeah it was just and i didn't know why though like yeah, i still yeah, couldn't yeah. place it like i'm interested to probably go back and try playing it again just to see what the issue was like if i can figure it out now i've played games like but that where you're like everything feels like it should right click for an, but, but I'm it's not, just not but yeah i'm not having like not an working. experience here it just feels like bellarati <laughs> <laughs> Where and it's like, yeah, it's a game, but why? <laughs> That's exactly why I passed on the winter, Dwarves Winter. But I'm gonna send you a I, hairy picture. I feel like this particular one has a bunch of mechanics in it that I'm going to really enjoy. Well, you would you would hope that like they would evolve. Yeah, and right? that too. So I'm like, I'm ready so to like give them another another prior, chance. Right. Right. Like, like uh, the Century New World. Like all the centuries have been solid. But, like, the latest one, it feels like they've learned from everything they've done before. Right. And it's, like, the best yet. And so you do kind of hope when they're, like, uh, multiple games in the same series that they're 
kind of learning from the prior ones and 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 building on that and making something better. Or is it going to go the movie sequel route where the first one is <laughs> <laughs> actually watchable and then it just gets so derived? And what just, you didn't just like garbage. Hellraiser five? <laughs> Spider Man three. I mean, all right, guys. This uh, game starts at fifty dollars. <laughs> That's the other thing too, the fifty dollar price point yeah. isn't like crazy, but because it looks kinda like light, you also kinda wonder like, is that a lot for you want to spend forty on it but not fifty. For is like a light worker placement? Yeah. Like I don't know. I You're mean, like a thirty to forty is what you think? But you get the free enchanted I mean, forest. It, it does seem like a good <laughs> Like component wise, yeah, because you're I mean getting it does miniatures. Seem like a good quality, you know, good quality. That cactus brawler is legit. I would actually just the cactus that. brawler. Yeah, yeah. Just, you could you, know, you could hook that up in your D and D campaign. Little or Arizona pride, just cactus, uh, just cacti running around, just punching people. <laughs> the little bone crusher and stuff, like, like that would be down, right? Guy. That guy's rad looking. You're selling us on the minis. <laughs> I think it's just like a try before you buy. I know I say it all the time, but I just think it's something I'd want to like experience and and see if it like works or if it's just going to be like oh, another worker placement you know hmm. okay. well okay. hold on uh we you appreciate know, that early commitment that's right we do appreciate that early commitment aussie solo gamer so i'm gonna have to say i'm kind of on board with this okay. because excited. of the mechanics yeah because of, uh, specifically because of the area control in the game yeah i'm super interested in how that's going to split your workers because you have to use your workers on your main boards to go ahead and control what you're doing and yeah. get resources and stuff like that. But then you also have to worry about those same workers being involved in placement. And I do like games like that. Yeah. And it I really enjoy that. It gives you tough decisions. Right. Super it's tough decisions. Like, I mean, it's totally different mechanics, but mm -hmm. like something like an Arboretum, right? Where it's like, right. what do I want to put in my, my tableau versus what do I need to hold back? That kind of feeling of... A and push and pull. You know, they never had anything bad with the production value. So I know that's going to be good. Right. I don't and think it was like later or anything. I think it was. No, it was. Time. It was. I mean, they did an excellent job. And I feel like I'm ready to give them another chance on this. Like, I'm I'm down with this. So I'm, this I want to like back this. a very this. safe back. If anyone yeah. who has looked at the campaign and it feels like enticing and they're on the fence, it mm -hmm. seems like you're saying go for it. Be uh, well, absolutely. Because yeah. Of the comp because it seems and more innovative. And, and, like, they had any right. trouble in the past, and hopefully they built off a past experience. And you get a ton of different components and stuff like yeah. that that y they've unlocked in their Kickstarter and stuff. Like, they've just done a good job, and they always do a good job You've with that portion like of it. my coin a little closer really? to being tempted. <laughs> no, because it did seem like – but I just, I just was, like, waiting for, like, some extra <laughs> something – to really like make me excited about mm -hmm. it beyond just what felt like another light worker placement game. Yeah, you know? and the board and the mechanics on the board and placing those strategically, not only for placement of where you're going to collect resources from, but also wanting to place so you can build to fight monsters. I was like, wow, even then when you're placing things on the board and you're trying to make tough decisions on the board with, okay, well, I need to be next to this and this for these buildings over here that I want to build, but also, you know, I do want to take out this guy. And so, like, that's what I really, really enjoyed about those mechanics to it. So I was Ooh. super excited. It's really hard to, like, pay attention when the cat's got, like, your hair over her hair. <laughs> so it's like she's got, like, some kind of toupee on They're or something. They're becoming one. It's like mini-me It's like, there. here, She's see? got, like, a toupee. Oh, like mini-me. It, like, it was across me. the she front. She loves me so much. And so she, she looks like, really, so like a really much. edgy 90s oh, kind of hot like topic kid. Yeah. thing going. <laughs> yeah. She's, I think she's, she's looking edgy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I think she plays drums. All right, Greg, would you back this game? I think I'm a pass for now, but I want to try it. I, 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 you know, it's a try before you buy kind of thing. Dr. Glory Hog? I am a pass. I, I would also have to actually play this in order to. Wow. I kind of thought right, they shook right. my confidence. So, like, they I would need more. They shook your confidence. Yeah, okay. I would need more before I actually jump in on this. Oh, my goodness. We're going to reload our chat, hopefully. Hopefully uh -oh. that My goes okay, guys. We got a big scary red alert. I know. Oh no, our comments are gone, guys. No. Wait, someone's back. There's okay. An, there's an old comment. Okay. Well, there's something. We'll just really focus on Martin's comment from 14 minutes ago. <laughs> <so. laughs> I agree, Martin. All hail the Cat Queen. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. So, backing, not backing, not backing. Yeah. You guys are just still on the fence. Yeah, All right. I'm not well, back. I'm down with it. I'm ready to give him another chance. Let's move on, though. All right. What do we got next? Kohaku. Kohaku is by Gold Seal Games. This is for one to four players. It's going to last about 30 to 40 minutes. This is a tile placement game where... Sorry. <laughs> where Leo, Leo, we see you. Thank <laughs> we you. We do. 
Oh my gosh. This is a tile placement that. game where you're going to be selecting tiles from a board in the middle, <laughs> and then you're going to be placing them in your own pool there. And you're going to be getting points off of how you place the tiles versus what sort of koi you have next to certain things, if there's matching rows and colors. And I got to say, the deluxe version of this looks like amaze balls, guys. I love the look oh and my the God. art of it. It's very pretty. Did you take a look at the deluxe stuff? Uh, I think so. Down to I, I think well, so. I, we'll, I, we'll get down to yeah, it. Yeah, we'll I need to it. see it again. I don't remember. Greg, though, what were your first impressions? Uh, this feels like uh, um, Tonari that just came out, or Sakatsu, like one of those kind of lighter tile laying kind of games. With right, like with some abstract sort of building yeah, there. Yeah, just kind of a spatial tile puzzle. Um, spatial so tile puzzle are so hot right now. <laughs> I saw them at the Troubadour <laughs> in California. Um, they just feel it just feels like. Uh, Are you from California? Oh man, that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> it feels like uh, things I've seen before. You yes. know, lay tiles, crate sets. You know, depending on how you lay things out, you're gonna score different ways. Like, I, I'm not sure if there's anything that jumped out at me as new, but everything about it looked good. You know, does that make sense? Like, it's good enough that I wouldn't discourage anyone from backing it, but it didn't like jump out at me as like, there's something new here. There's something different here, you know? Mm. I don't know. Um, it's pretty, though. I think it's very pretty. Dr. Gorehog, what did you think? So <laughs> when I first watched it, um, the video, I was thinking, this reminds me of Koi because it had, you know, the Koi fish, the lily ponds, the butterflies. It had, like, the dragonflies. Like, it seemed like everything was, like, matching up. But obviously that game is more about directing your fish around and everything where this one is – about laying tiles. I don't particularly like tile laying games a ton. Huh. What I do like about it, though, is that you're drafting out of the middle and then building your own little kind of area and trying to maximize this. I actually have the exact opposite feeling about this one that I did the last one. Oh, really? We played their Tricky Tides. Yes. And that was a super yes, light yes. game. Yes, yes. But, like, was, it had, was fun. It had some depth to it. And uh -huh. It was enjoyable. So I'm actually more excited about this one because of the last game I played of theirs was just good. Like, it was objectively a fun game. Oh, my God. The dog is just going to throw up his stuffed animal. <laughs> How about you don't <laughs> swallow it, bro? I'm glad there's not a camera here because there might be vomit soon. No, he's okay. He's going to lay down. He's going he's to like take a snooze. <laughs> it's okay. He's going to take a snoozer. How many times will your animals vomit during stream? <laughs> like <laughs> we need like a, a little thing. bing. It's like a counter like a that comes count. up. Every time we hear him <laughs> pop up, some phlegm slash toy mix. Or just every time there's an animal-related incident. Hey, Bye. nice to see you there. Oh. He's just leaving. Okay. Go I'm gone. glad that you brought up Tricky Tides because Tricky Tides was a Kickstarter that I missed, and I was super sad about missing it because – the gameplay, I loved the gameplay on Tricky cool. Tides. It was yeah. Cool, yeah. It was super simple to teach to people. It was solid gameplay. Like, it had great mechanics to Still it. Pick up and deliver game. Yeah. And games. it was, it had, it or was shifting. interesting, you know? Yeah. And it was great production and stuff. Like, they it did a great felt job. more innovative than this. This feels more like just things mm -hmm. I've seen before, you know? Okay. What I mean? Whereas Tricky Tides did sort of feel like a weird, like, uh, trick taking slash. Pick up and deliver, like a weird mashup of genres. And, and, okay. and because of that, it felt kind of like, oh, this is bringing something new to tabletop. Well, also, we talked about this before, too, though, yeah. is you have most of those games that you mentioned. I do where, have some, yeah, yeah. Where we don't. So we don't actually yeah. have a bunch of – I don't think we have a bunch of tile placement have games. You, you played Tonari, right, with like all yeah, the fish? Yeah, I, I did, I did. Yeah, you yeah. played it, and Saikatsu yeah. kind of has a similar feel. I don't know, it just feels – like, the scoring all feels like things you've seen before. I don't know. I, I, I didn't see anything enough new here to get, like, really One, excited about you it. you can hate draft in this hate main pool. Good. Hate yeah. drafting is always good, guys. I'm a firm believer in hate drafting. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Glory Hawk's never like, no. You that. no. <laughs> <laughs> Our first is hate. Our first magic draft. Sweet hate. She looked over. She's like, why did you take that creature? You're not even that color. I'm like, because I don't want you to have it. She's and like, I was oh. like, Bing. it was like, ding. Mistakes Wait made. a second. Mistakes were made. <laughs> she's been, she's been <laughs> we sit on opposite sides of the table now. We're like, nope, <laughs> she's not been today. Living off of that idea <laughs> yeah. for years now. Not today. Well, the tiles do shift down and everything, which I liked. But here's, I mean, I love the abstract sort of tile placement games like this, where you're going to get points off of placing things in certain ways and like that. Like the Lanterns Beginning games, build, you, yeah. You I love, love, yeah. love, love games like that. Like, those are totally my jam. So this was exciting for me. But the most exciting thing for me is... Rado is Rado endorsing it? Ho the Kohaku oh. Deluxe, which are acrylic-based tiles, are layered, 
layered. So when you have your fish, you have your fish here and you have your dragonfly oh, here. Yeah, I saw so the, it creates okay, a yeah. 3D effect on your tiles, guys. This thing is going to like look amazing. Box, which I was like, oh, I'm down for the $30 pledge. I got to she's see. Take it to the <laughs> I got to see the tiles in person. They look fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, cool. So you've seen this. Oh, right. yeah. I've seen the tiles in person. They, I, whenever he was like, and check these out. And I was like, oh, oh my God. Is that how he approached you just randomly? Like, no, that wasn't, that wasn't it. I was talking about tricky ties. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not how that works. Gotcha. She's coming out of like, the restroom, and he's just there. Check, check these out. out. He's just randomly going to people. She's around. going into her car to like, get something out of the trunk. Hey, check these out. Why are you in my trunk? Oh, it's so messed up. the body it's so I left back there. <laughs> but I'm super excited. I'm super excited about playing this game. I do think it's game. aesthetically really cool. And I don't think there's anything, like, not to like about it. It just, I just, does it also feels like there's nothing new here hmm. besides the aesthetics. So, um, Does your game have a turtle? Oh, never mind. I'm buying three Done. copies. Done. Seven co Ten copies. Done. <laughs> I, to be All the copies. As my, d as my kid would say, to be honest with you, I was totally in for the $30 pledge. Because 30 bucks seems... Oh, she can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Sorry. At least she's not coughing something. Turtle right equals insta buy. One hundred percent true. Turtle does equal insta buy. I, I'm in for thirty bucks, but I'm not surprised that you wanted at the deluxe version, which is fine. I'm not upset about it. I mean, it's your money, right? It's not like we have a joint. <laughs> oh. Oh, dun dun dun. I noticed the um, eviction notice on the front door, and I got there too. <laughs> I does that have anything to do with all the Kickstarters you've been Hello, backing? darkness, my old friend. So we have the acrylic seems to be the new hotness for deluxe components. I believe Queen Games is doing a lot of acrylics Meeple as sources. well. That's right. Uh, who else? The acrylic, Whatever people uh, can do to stand out. I, don't, I mean, it's a competi very competitive market. Jetpack you know? Joyride did that yeah. with their yeah. those ones. What, yeah. are the, what are the ones that Meeple Source has for um, Wingspan? The kid makes are those acrylic? Yeah, those are acrylic as yeah. well. Like their little see-through pieces and those everything. Are super those are so looking. cool looking, yeah. Well, I'm down with it. I mean, there's acrylic dice being made and stuff like that too, where they have all sorts of cool stuff in them. Oh like God, she's such a sucker for acrylic <laughs> dice. It's, she bought some today, I think. Wow, wow! You just gonna discuss our morning, business on the this internet morning, we like were this? I'm talking about <laughs> shelves full of dice yeah. right now. I know we were talking about this. we were talking about budgets and stuff like that. And then I come in here and she's literally got up on the TV. She's ordering something from Etsy that are dice. All right, and I was like, all you right, need, you need all to right. order more stuff on smaller screens <laughs> so he doesn't catch you. Well, here's the thing: she's like, when you're ordering things on like a 42 inch screen, it's she harder makes, to hide. She makes fun of me, but it's like forty dollar <laughs> dice set where I'm like, can we just buy a game? Listen, like, forty bucks. <laughs> All right, Greg, would you back this game? I think I'm a, another, you know, try before you buy with this so one. So you're just I a normal Greg. So I'm a normal Greg. We're going to just start calling that the Greg. The, the Greg. Greg? Hey, man. I'm going to give I this game the Greg. I represent people who are, you know, hard to please. I'm going to give this game the Greg treatment. <laughs> Dr. Glory Hog. Are you excited? I'm in for 30 bucks. In <laughs> for, I feel 30 for 30 bucks. I mean, it seems like I can't miss. I really enjoyed their last product. It's not something I have a ton of in the house. It's something I know she likes. I don't want. I didn't really want to go the deluxe version because I don't think this is something I'm going to be bringing out in front of my friends constantly, being like, "Check this out." Where there's other games Check that I'm. Check out my acrylic turtle, guys. Right. That I'm. Well, I have said that in person, <laughs> but it's different. <laughs> but like, I don't see this as a game that I'm trying to showcase constantly. <laughs> it's just so many. Where. So where many there's things. other games like Dice Throne so Adventures and stuff. Yeah. Is something that I'll be like, "Check this out. This is cool and excitement." But that's just my own personal excitement for different game mechanics. Hmm. All right. Well, I I was in for the sixty bucks on this because I love the acrylic tiles. I love the hate drafting. I love the tile placement in this game. I'm super excited about that. They did an excellent job with Tricky Tides on this. And we have Petter saying that for tile on Kickstarter, I'm sticking with ca the cats and calico, which is totally understandable. Like Wait those are. Did there's been some those? great ones. Which ones? I know we backed we back the cats one. Are you trying to get me into another tile game right now? Moving on. Moving on. How many, tile, on. How many on. tile games do we have in the queue? <laughs> I'm sure on. we can find something affordable <laughs> moving on here. Oh, gosh. Oh, how many wait. Totally affordable, guys. I'm, now I'm actually thinking, how many tile games do we have in our Kickstarter queue right now <laughs> that have just not been delivered? So, Glory oh no. Hound, do you want to discuss how many you think are in there? This is Beyond Humanity Glory Colonies. Hound. I think she's moving on to the next one. It's game. for let one it. to five let players. It go. go. It's going to last about 30 to 180 minutes. This is a crazy ridiculously expensive game but for good reason because they actually have little circuit boards inside of each one of these components and they all do like these advanced sort of like calculations and stuff that's actually hooked up to an app so whenever you put one of those pieces on your main system it affects all the other pieces which is really cool 
You don't have to do any sort of crazy dice rolling in this game. The pieces and everything and your little RFID card cards and stuff like that are going to affect the game for you and then do the calculations and then you're going to see the results based on the app and actually the little modules start lighting up whenever there's issues there, which is really, really interesting. So Greg, what were your first impressions on this? Well, I looked at the next one first before this one and I was like, ooh, another one of these $100 games. Let's see what the next one is. And then I'm like, ah! like the sticker, <laughs> sticker shock. shock. Like, I mean... Talk about the hobby becoming more and more of like a luxury hobby. I mean, two hundred and fifty something dollars plus thirty dollars something shipping. I mean, I, I'm excited to see like the integration of technology into board games, but uh, it's hard for me to just get past this price, especially just roll the dice and send the money and hope it's a fun game, you know. But it does seem like they've thought of like everything with this. Like there's co-op and there's like one-off missions and there's like campaign stuff and there's like you can save and come back. I mean, it, if you're looking for that high, high-end luxury kind of experience, this feels like they have it. I'm very excited to see what they do going forward, but like the sticker shock for me is just is just out of this world, pun intended. So yeah, I, I that was those were sort of my impressions when I first looked at it. All right, Dr. Glory Hog, what about you? This reminded me a lot of like Golem Arcana, like the level of intensity, which was a miniatures game where you had a little pen that would like you know hit little marks on the board and you could be like okay I want to go over here and it tell you oh, it's going to take you x amount of movement because of difficult terrain or you could fire this far because you're up on a hill which is really nice to take all that kind of math and memorization out of miniatures games and just kind of make it more enjoyable and fun to play um, I went heavy in on that game and I got burned in the aspect that it just kind of fell apart like they never really got a good yeah. scene going for it and then I mean app support stopped very soon afterwards and I just have it sitting around now, and I don't even know what to do with it. I can't even literally give it away. No, you can't. Because um, nobody wants it. I mean, and yeah. I, I was an ambassador for a short period of time, and people would constantly come up to me and be like, hey, you interested in getting my copy? And I'm like, D I don't need 15 base copies when I can't even play <laughs> my own. That game's like the poster child for... <laughs> for these app-based failures. It's sort of the fear failures. that people yeah. have with, like, tech and board games. Here's yeah. the thing, though, is it, if it was still supported and they could have gotten, like, a group together, like kind of like how Magic has a group, not that big, obviously. I think it could have done well. I just think it kind of was, like, too early for its time. It was before everyone had iPads. So, like, I went out and got, yeah. like, a Google Nexus just to play it. Wow. So, like, I spent, like, another $200 just to yeah. get, like, a th yeah. So, it ended up being a big miss for me. This isn't a theme I'm super excited about. I So, I, I really had to kind of, like, look at it and look at it again. And then I watched some of the reviews on it. And I was listening to some of the things Rado said. And some of the things that he mentioned that kind of worried me is that it, he, said, he felt like it wasn't very good at two which is typically how we play most of our games. Right. And a lot of the math, since it's done behind the scenes, you don't really get to see that, so you don't realize, like, why it's doing that math, and so you kind of miss out on the, the story aspect of building a civilization. So I just don't know how it all works together. And with how much it costs, this is 100% something that I'd have to see in person. Like, my uh, my wife plays a bunch of, like, little sim games, like, on her phone, like yeah. little apps, you know, where you're building civilizations and buildings and stuff. And they're fun for, like, a month. Yeah, and they're also like a buck, yeah. you know, <laughs> with some in-app purchases. I've, I play a ton of those, and they're yeah. fun for about and a I've month. And I played some of those as well, and it just seems like that's what this kind of is. Like that meets like terraforming Mars or yeah. something, but with like this three hundred dollar after shipping like price tag. And I just I just don't know who this is for. I mean, I'm sure there's it's for someone. There's like a thousand plus backers. No, it already. definitely is. It reminds me of something that people that like Artemis, you know, like the huge, you know, Star Trek fleet type of mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. game would, would be into. If you're a computer person, this is a hundred percent. But guess I'm you excited that thing. people are pushing the envelope this way. Like I, I'm glad that there's people like being innovative and 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 coming up with new ways to like implement technology. And I hope they can like streamline it and make it more like like some like you mentioned Forbidden Sky earlier. Like like have that technology in like an affordable package, you know? Yeah. Right, so right. And unless there's people who are being innovators, that's never going to happen. But like, I don't need to be on the cutting edge of it. That, you know that's what I mean? It. Like, I didn't want the iPhone when it was brand new. Uh, yeah. I didn't jump in until it was like on five or six. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When it was like pretty, pretty solid. Let, Everybody knew it was good. Let out the other people who have $300 laying around, like, be on the cutting edge. Yeah. And, so and take that first wave, and then I'll come like two years later. When I'll it's come like on the revised edition. Yeah, when it's like so all streamlined. And perfect and flawless. Here's, 
at Martin brings up a great point, and I'm glad he brought it up because this is kind of where I was headed. Was was this at any conventions before it hit Kickstarter? This seems like a game that should have hit a year of conventions to get its eyes on before going to Kickstarter. I know that they pushed some marketing. I know that, you know, Dice Tower went ahead and looked at yeah. it. You know, they hit yeah. all the big people like that, but I don't remember seeing them at like around a ten, convention. Or Gen Con or and this when is the sort I of thing looked you'd up, think you'd remember. When I look up or their like company and stuff like that like i i'm having a hard time finding their company like they're so new and so fresh and that it's so ambitious for a first it time is thing it's too. so ambitious yeah. for a first time thing Makes and me nervous. they kind of go over that a little bit in the video saying hey you know we're from different areas of technology and this that and the other and we've right. done kickstarters before we're just you know now we're collaborating on this which is understandable however i mean the game looks fantastic it's a lot of money to spend. Two hundred and twenty-five dollars, guys. Two hundred and twenty-five dollars that you're going to be spending on this game. That is off. a Kickstarter exclusive only. What's up? Oh, okay, we want to look at some oh, of the comments. Well, no, here. I wanted to see their page. Oh, whose page? This page right there. I wanted to see how backed it is. Like, so it's they're definitely it's backed. backed. Oh yeah, they're like okay. two hundred plus thousand dollars. I thought it was. I thought yeah, it was this over. is this is crazy. They're, they're doing fine for themselves. Although the forty-five thousand dollar goal seemed like really low for something with so much tech, but you know. I think they're confident that they're that now the people are going to be excited by this this technology. The other thing for this is is that it is a Kickstarter exclusive item, so that's a two-edged sword. One, if you really are interested in this game, you may you better get it now because it's not going to be around. Secondary Two, market's going to be like six hundred dollars. Why would you make this a Kickstarter only product? I don't know. This well, this seems if like you're going to have you would sell at conventions, ongoing or support for this thing. Why is it Kickstarter only? That's a very Really good point, actually. Maybe they think they're going to go the seventh continent route, where they're going to just do a revised edition every but couple years. But the point that it relies year. so much on technology makes that very scary, because it could be that they just make a big splash, make a bunch of cash, and then a year later they've dropped all the support for it, and you're stuck with this expensive toy you can't really use. Whereas you would think they'd be like, we've invested so much like R and D and like making the app work and all that. Why not continue to sell this product? And right. Continue to make, it, because it, it makes me nervous that they're like going to move on to something else and this is just going to get like another Gollum Arcana. It kind of sounded feel. like they were going to open it up so people could have different scenarios yeah. and stuff. And that's cool. But then again, like I said, why wouldn't you keep selling the base components for it aftermarket? Yeah. So people could then join in on that. And so there was like just a few things in here that I was like, OK, well, the company is super, super new for me and that's a big risk for me with how much money is being devoted towards it and then I don't know I'm I'm gonna have to say I'm not on on board for me, this game not on board for this game but guys I, it looks amazing but I feel like uh, two years from now we could be like three-headed monster could be like a household name oh possibly right? yeah like with how ambitious they with are how ambitious they are and how innovative it feels like they're they want to be like these could be the next CMO and this could be the next you know or it could be like Gollum Arcana, where it's like, what? Oh yeah, I remember that game that came out and flopped. Like, it, like it's this feels like more than any other Kickstarter I've seen in a long time. It could really go either direction, and that being stuck at that weird like crossroads is very like nerve wracking. When we're talking about this kind of a price <laughs> tag, you know. So, what do you think, Dr. Glory Hog? Are you on board or no? Um, I I think I have to pass, honestly. Like. I really want it to be a thing, and I really want to play somebody else's copy. <laughs> I just don't want to <laughs> drop 300 bucks on it. That's just the, the price versus the risk is too high for me. But, I mean, if it's in your budget, everyone makes different amounts right. of money. If and it's in your budget, why not? Go for it. But you are always pro-technology in I games. Am. And so, comparatively, from this to, say, the new Teberu that Kaman's coming out with, like, why would you be swayed? for one more than the other because they both have apps they both a have name. like so name the name, difference okay. is is that yeah, the table by come on is going to be it's going to be like a board that's going to integrate all their other games too so i really feel like there's going to be an easy way to like upgrade or to like kind of retrofit your other games to use that board and i can use it with multiple products so it's kind of like buy the difference of buying a tv versus buying a playstation my tv can be used for 
Blu-rays, PlayStation, Nintendo Switch, all kinds of different things where PlayStation can be used for PlayStation. Buying like, that's dice. Not, that's not like a very good example because PlayStation <laughs> can be used for a lot of different <laughs> things too. But you know what I'm saying? Like one is a very specific product for one specific thing. But you also know where the other one is kind of open to the other things that can be added to it. And I could see other people making their games compatible with the taboo yeah. or, or whatever you call it. Taboo, taboo. I can't remember what it's called. Taboo. Taboo. Taboru. Taboru. <laughs> she took Japanese. She makes one. it sound so easy. Yeah, well, she took Japanese for like well, a year or two. Well, this like proven <laughs> entity that's been around for years, and you feel like they are going to be around for years to come. Whereas, like, this is just kind of, even though it seems like everyone involved has a lot of like expertise, experience. Yeah. experience this entity, Three Headed Monster, is so new that it, it that it's understandable that there's going to be trepidation and hesitation. I'm super down that kind of cash. super excited to see where it goes. I think that one of the game sort of issues that it has is the fact that they've put so much on the middle portion of this game. Like, here's the buildings. They light up. Then, you know, stuff's happening. That I don't know as much about any of the other mechanics of this game. Yeah. Like, I know that, okay, you're, you're like, trying to diplomatically solve problems and it's co-op semi-cooperative and yeah. you're like going to be like voting on yeah voting on things and, and yeah. stuff but well, i don't know anything else one of the one of the things that rado brought up is that it doesn't really get exciting until like like towards the middle middle end of the game where like events start happening and you have to start struggling to do things oh okay and that, at, at least with his with his prototype copy that being on a different planet didn't really affect it enough. He he wanted to go to like a desert planet or an ice planet where you have yeah, different starting things like where you're like, like oh my gosh, I'm planets, here yeah. at this planet and it has no water. Or oh, I'm on this planet that's always cold. What do we do? We need to make heat first. The other one, where the other one's like, we need to make water. We need to find water. So like that would be interesting. And I always like the alien aspect of planets more than right. the terraforming of planets. So like, without alien races that I know of. I, I feel like you're missing that because there's got to be something there, like you know, microbes or something. I love. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Ahead. I love Isaac's uh, comment here. It's definitely a cool game. Doesn't that seem kind of like, <laughs> like is that? That's not a very good quote. It's definitely a cool game. You could say that about almost Hungry Hunger Hippos. It's definitely a cool game. Smashing those Sweet. little levers is really fun. Like, I, it, not much of a quote. Okay, it? so we have Beyond Human Colonies here. Thank you so much for showing up, guys. So you guys have a video specifically about the other mechanics in the game or specifically about the other planets. Which portion of that on there? Do we have any other questions for I Beyond? I wanted to jump on what you were saying because you, you made me think of something I thought of is all of this – exciting like miniatures and lights and all that i would much rather see that in like a game with alien races and spaceships and space battles and then just building buildings like just terraforming like it seems like out all this work they could have made this like this fun adventure game I, I i don't know like it felt like a lost opportunity i would love to see spaceships with light up not just here's another building i, I don't spaceships know spaceships would be freaking awesome Could you imagine? oh yeah. my gosh that and, would be and amazing make it some kind of space exploration battle kind of 4xy kind of game i just I'm kind of with you. Like, I'm not sure exactly what I'm getting into here. And with this price tag, I'm, I'm, I'm a hesitant. Yeah. I Overall, though, uh, Beyond Humanity, are you guys going to be at PAX Unplugged or BGG or anything like that? Let us know in the comments. Yeah, so that would be huge. Yeah, people it, can find you guys if you guys are. This. Yeah, and, and check this out before they – try before they buy, as Greg would like to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next up, we have League of Infamy. This is by Mantic Games. It's for two to five players. It didn't have a number of minutes listed, but... <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's an amount but of minutes long. <laughs> it's probably going to be a little bit long because this is a modular sort of game where you're going to be, not adventures, you're villains going out and doing like dastardly deeds, but it is an adventure game or like semi-role playing, semi-cooperative. Although it does have like a lot of stab your partner in the back moments here because although you're going through these dungeons and you're trying to do all these dastardly deeds, you're also trying to like get the most money and get the most stuff, you know? Yeah. So, Greg, what were your first impressions? This feels like another, hey, Gloomhaven's the number one game on BGG. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make another <laughs> game like Gloomhaven. <laughs> like, I just, I've got fatigue on these kinds of fatigue. games. You okay. know? I mean, I, I love D&D in the 80s and 90s, is like everybody did and stuff, but I just, another, and this feels very true to that. Like, hey, they're gathering people up. We're going to go on this quest. we got to go kill the dragons. Like, I like that it's kind of true to that like original source material but at the same time it just feels so played out it's another hundred dollar price tag 
there also wasn't a lot of like videos of like people talking about what they thought of it reviews it didn't feel like unless i'm mistaken i feel like this did not get out to a lot of reviewers which is kind of common for you miniature style games usually. maybe it is I'm they get out to a lot seeing a because their prototype of copies are really hard to get out yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. takes longer to learn them takes longer to display them but and then i just more don't know how this make. sets itself apart from all the other gloomhaven and descent thrones you know clones that are out there so I think their setting apart thing was the fact that you were villains. I think that was the main thing that they were trying to go for. But you're still going to go fight the dragons. It just seems right. like the <laughs> same thing. Like, okay, we're bad now. but Slight difference. You're not trying to subdue dragons. You're trying to slit their throats. Yeah, totally different, Greg. But, God. but guess what? In the late <laughs> 70s, you could choose to be a chaotic, evil character in D&D. Like, that option always existed. Like, No, it didn't. Even that's not innovative. Ribbit. All right, hold on. You were, <laughs> even, were you <laughs> born in the 70s? I was not. Dr. Glory Hog. I'm a young, you young you guy, even know. child of the 80s. What do, you, what do you feel about this game? Like, what do you think about this game? So when I first saw it, the first thing I thought of was John Wick, the, the movie, because <laughs> he, talks, he, talks about, he talks about going out and doing a job and getting your coin of infamy uh, and taking that to the barkeep okay. and, saying. like, using that. So I was like, oh, it reminded me of that whole hotel scene where they had, like, the golden yeah. coins they were paying the assassins yeah. with and – you know, so I was like, oh, uh, so that was kind of interesting. I liked the fact that it was more adult where it sounded like they were being realistic. You're not going to, like, go out and stop those dragons. Like, go out and cut their throats. And you're like, oh, my God. Yeah. And it seemed where it, it reminds me kind of like that Munchkinish or, like, that Arcadia Quest feel where, like, you kind of need to work together until you don't. Yeah. And it's up to – that's always has a fun aspect when you're playing the game because you're like, I need your help, I need your help, but uh, I don't right now, so step, step, step. And then, like, the <laughs> next time you – the next dungeon you go through or the next thing you do, it's like – I need your help. And they're like, I remember when you stabbed me in the back last time. And you're like, I won't again. And there's some more diplomacy in there, which is something that you usually enjoy in games. I diplomacy. Do, I do like that. I do like games like <laughs> that. Having to remember, like, kind of like, ooh, what happened? Is this going to be worth it? Do Is it worth me potentially losing points to help this person out? I kind of like those different aspects of it. Um, so that, that was the main thing I thought about. It seemed interesting, the aspects of it. Okay. So with this game here, they've done, I believe it was Hellboy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have played that one. I believe that just got... It was just getting delivered or just got delivered or yeah. something like that. It's I have not new. seen Hellboy yet, so I would be interested to go ahead and try that before I go into this on it. I usually love, love, love games like this because you do have the uniqueness of having that modular board come out, so you don't know what's going to happen next with that. They have random monsters that are going to go through the dungeon in this, which is always cool because as you're flipping out cards, you come across something you didn't expect in that scenario. The huge drawback, I think, that this has is one, if you go down to the bottom here, I'm not going to go all the way down though yet, it says the rules are very much a work in progress, which I'm not happy to hear about. <laughs> yeah, that's concerning. And the second thing is that they only have six scenarios for this, like so six yeah, I'm glad you brought campaign that up. scenarios. Yeah. So, so it's still pretty early on then. Looking back at that's all the other ones that we've done this year, yeah. how many just had six? Most of them were, were rated by hours, like 52 hours, 180 well, and, and hours. A, and some of them were like, oh, we have X amount of scenarios, but we built in this like randomizer thing where you can go through the same scenarios over and over again and have like different experiences. And I, we don't know if this does or not. And I think you're, what you caught on to there, which I, now that you said, I remember seeing that as well, like oh, only six, is, is also sort of a symptom of what I was say saying as well, where it's like, it seems like they're not quite ready to like start this Kickstarter yet. They haven't gotten it out to a lot of reviewers. They're still working on the rule book. They've only got six scenarios. Like it feels like they need another six months or something to kind of germinate on this and then launch the Kickstarter. Right. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a little half baked. I think. I feel like it is. Maybe just a little too soon for this. I would be excited if they came back with you know we have we have X amount amount of hours of gameplay, and I know that they built a replayability factor into this with the roaming monsters and stuff like that, which I totally get. But if I'm getting an RPG style game where I'm traveling through a dungeon and stuff, I want some story too. Like yeah. even if it's a small story, Arcadia quest had like a tiny story, but they had a bunch of different scenarios and their expansions had scenarios. And like, those were so much fun to go through because by the time you get through all of them and then you go back to the first one, like, it's not it's not fresh in your mind anymore. You know what I'm saying? There was enough to it, yeah, that it felt like you could replay it again with different characters and stuff. Right, right. So, I mean, 
other items about this game, though, that look great are just, you know, the minis look great. I love the fact that you're playing villains. I'm a huge fan of playing villains in games. I like playing the bad guy side because that's like, you just get to do fun different things, that's you know? It's more interesting. It's yeah, it's like different. playing Dungeon Lord, you know? You're trying to get all the adventurers to come into your dungeon, yeah. and then you want to kill them. <laughs> like, it's just such a fun concept and idea than having it be the constant other way around where everybody's always saving everything, you know? I want to do something dastardly now and then. So I would love to see more from this, but I'm probably going to have to pass. You're going to pass? Yeah, Dr. I think, Gorehog. I think I'm probably the one who's the most sold on this. Yeah. Um, I didn't realize, though, what you were saying about the um, how much content's already been generated for it, which is a big thing. The Also, the other thing is, since there has been such a wave of games like this, I feel like we're going to give this the hardest critique out of all the games because it's just like, I've seen a million you of these. you got to do something like, different. Yeah, yeah. They all just blend together for me. Yeah, so you feel like you really have to kind of like stand out in some way, shape, or form. So like exa good example, the last one that came out that we talked about that I think that was really big that we had discussed was the one where it was all happening in the dream world and stuff. Like it was a whole completely yeah. different – scenario kind when it wasn't a just a D and D scenario. It kind was of like an unreliable narrator kind yeah. of a feel where you don't know if you can trust what you're seeing. Yeah, that was like a wrinkle. It was something different to set it apart. Exactly. So I think with this one I would have to try like some of their other games or play this at a convention or, or something before I would buy in on it. But I'm getting more and more that way with these types of games since we've played a few of them and you know, our time is limited as far as we can get in. I mean we've been playing pandemic we played uh, not pandemic, we played um Clank. Clank, Clank Legacy. Legacy. We played five games of that, but that took our Saturday and Sunday up. Like we yeah. didn't play any other games on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, we just played weekend. Clank mm -hmm. Legacy. So yeah. these types of games do take up a lot of time. So it really just depends on if you have one, if these are style games that you and your group like to play, and if you've got the free time to play them. Yeah, I've just got a, fi a general fatigue for these kinds of games, and they just uh, and uh, and you know it's like the same thing with Legacy games. Like it just seems like a game a, a genre gets hot, and then it just gets so flooded. That it's like, uh, another, uh, even rolling rights, I'm starting to feel that way, you know? I felt like that since, yeah. like, the second well, one. Yeah, well, absolutely, and you Legacy have to. Legacy games, campaign games like this, it's just another Gloomhaven ripoff. You have to make it rip -off. exceptionally unique yeah. at that point. You really you know? do. Like you, otherwise, you're just going to be drowned out in the crowd, you know? Because, I mean, we, <sighs> we've we seen one of these sort of games pretty much every week. Yeah. Every week. And how do you pick? And so, I, to me, it's almost like, well, I just don't pick any because... <laughs> <laughs> because it, there is no way. So I'll just wait until I play one of these at someone else's house and fall in love with it, and then I'll buy that one because there's a hundred to choose from. So I don't feel like I have to pick. You know what I mean? That's right. pretty fair. And, <laughs> you know, Mar Martin says, at this point, unless the game has an incredible story world building, a standard dungeon delve isn't really needed anymore. And I'm, I think I'm kind of at that point, too. Like, I like the Arcadia Quest style, stabbing in the back, like cooperative Helping stabbing in the back. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that's f a fun, like, uh, fun mechanic fun to twist. play. Yeah, exactly. It's a fun twist on things because you want to get through the dungeon, but you also don't want anybody to do better than you. But I don't think that's going to be the thing that sells me on it, is just what it is. I don't think that's enough at this point. Because the, the difference is roaming monsters, you know, other other games have modular boards. And then that mechanic, the stabbing in the back mechanic, yeah. you know. So I don't know. I All right, you. I hear you. All right, try before I buy, I guess. Oh. Greg, <laughs> I'm the same way. Absolutely, same way? Yeah. Dr. Glory Hog. Yeah, I, I want to play it first at this yeah. point. But th that's just because we've got other ones in the pipeline that are still in route to us that like we haven't even so played. Like, so many good ones, and right? We've been, and to be fair, with Clank Legacy, the thing that sold us on that one, besides <laughs> already knowing we liked Clank, was that Penny Arcade was involved. And so the story was good. Like, the story so far in it is really good. Oh, it good. is really like good, I'm yeah. As I'm reading through the different stories and, like, the different paths and stuff, I'm like, I wonder what would have happened if we would have done that thing instead. And, like, I really want to know and go back and, like, read that part to see, like, what twists and turns we've done and – so I don't know. Yeah, I feel like I need a lot of. I need to have a good story. All right, Greg. <laughs> what was your favorite game from <sighs> the four that we saw today? There was nothing that like stood out for me. Nothing. As, well, I mean, they all looked fine. You yes. know what I mean? There, but there was nothing where I was like, <gasps> "Ooh, like I'm really tempted by this one." Like usually, there's actually usually the majority of them I'm tempted by. You know. Right. Whereas this time it just felt like, oh, it's another light worker placement. Oh, it's another tile laying game. Oh, it's another crazy dungeon crawl and then this uh, the only w i mean honestly it was the um 
the two hundred fifty five two hundred twenty five dollars <laughs> one. That one was exciting. I mean, that's the one that I'd be most int- most interested in trying because it, it feels like they're at least trying to like push the envelope and be innovative and do something different. I think for people like us and I think our viewers who have decent game size, you know, collections have played a lot of games. I don't want another clone of something I've seen. I want to see the next new thing, and I like that that campaign at least. They're being innovative. They do something new. They're yeah. trying to do something different. It feels like the future of board gaming. Uh, so that's the only one I'm really excited about. But I just can't sign up for that price tag. So well, here's the thing with it. Like it's the mo- definitely probably the most exciting one I saw. But since it's got the highest price tag, it just needs a lot more research. So like yeah. before I could even kind of like say, yeah, I think we should go with this. I feel like I need to watch. Besides the videos they have there, I feel like I need to do more research. More and like research look up the on company everything, yeah. Look up I need to play it, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're just not – I mean, and, and that's not going to happen unless they're at cons and stuff because it's for an that price tag, you want to make sure it's something that you're going to want to play yeah, like a lot. it's too much. It's too much. Right? You don't want it to be a game that you buy and you put on the shelf and you don't play it. And honestly, besides the buildings and stuff, the board looks kind of normal. I don't really like the cosplay art. That they had, you know, like the people dressed up as the characters that never like like the uh, flying fro- frog kind of games, you know, mm. that kind of art style always looks a little. I don't know. Like not you're not a fan of it. I'm not okay. a big fan See, of it. Yeah, I like the flying frog art style, but that's me. Okay, so we have a few comments here. Let's see here. Have you checked out Galilean Moons on Kickstarter? Um, I believe I have. I just it's not fresh in my mind. I can't remember right now. I end up looking through a ton of Kickstarters. So sometimes sounds familiar. That's all yeah, I sometimes say. they get lost yeah. in it. But yeah, I'll go back and take like another look. Like I was look. telling her, like I'll, I'll look, look through 30 videos in one night just trying yeah. to kind of pick it up. There's a yeah. lot of board games on Kickstarter, oh guys. Yeah. Gilbert says, before and after shots of Clank Legacy, beard shots of Clank Legacy. <laughs> <laughs> we oh yeah, have don't forget to send your bushy pictures. That's right. <laughs> don't say bushy. <laughs> yeah, you know, bushy beards. We have Gilbert who's saying, Beyond Humanity was th- – what I was most excited by, but I need to read up more. Dr. Glory Hogg's totally with you with yeah. that. And Mike Farrell saying, what games have you backed that you were looking forward to? Oh, wow. That's like a whole. View and the Cursed. Huge. Tidal Blades. I'm still waiting discussion. on I haven't got to play that one. Um, and I do a lot of stuff with Skybound. There's so many games that we have that I'm ready to Papillon is receive. delivering now, I think. Is it really? I'm going to uh, have to go and look. I think Papillon is delivering I know we just now. got. The new Suro game in. We got Tussie oh Mussy right. in. We got. Did you guys get your Lovelace and Babbage? I just got we got our Lovelace and Babbage in. We got to play it once so far. We but got. Still love it. Another non Kickstarter, the Fantastic Factories. Like, we right. got a whole bunch of stuff in, like, just this within this last cool few Funko weeks. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, we've got a lot of so stuff. So it's really like go a through. matter of playing them all as fast as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Which right now, Clank Legacy is taking up a big chunk of that time. It is. We are but devoting I don't regret it at all. No, we are devoting a lot of time to Clank Legacy and trying I'm to finish that up. So I want to take off work on Monday and just play that. Instead. Right? That would be fun. As for me, I would say out of all of these games, I'm definitely most excited by the Dwarf Spring, like I said, mm. because of the mechanics and where I was going with those. And just like area control sort of games are just like yeah. one of my favorite types of games. So, And then... Right after that would be Kohaku because, yeah, like, I love tile placement. Tile and those tiles are so I pretty, guys. So a- exciting. And with Kohaku, you do feel like that's going to get to the table. Well, it's absolutely. It's going to get played. Where some of these other ones, they're Where dwarves probably wouldn't as much, you know. Yeah. Ko- and Kohaku, and these, you can uh, yeah. show to everybody. And, and any of these campaign games are going to come. You're going to be excited, but then they're going to sit on the shelf. Whereas, like, that one's actually going to get to the table. Right. Yeah. How dare you? They All would right. never sit on our shelf. <laughs> By the way, though, I, I don't want to, like, be like the Scrooge. Like, all four of them looked good. Oh, yeah. They're just – there wasn't, like, an X Factor, you know what I mean? Or the X Factor was too expensive. Like, those were the options this week. Greg is know? like the Simon Cowell of the group here. Where he's <laughs> like, where's my, where's my X Factor here? Yeah, you're a little pitchy dog. We need some buttons and stuff like that whenever uh, we do this oh, and they light up and everything. A seat that swivels around. Oh, that would be so awesome. Hit up the oh my Ko-Fi, God. guys, because uh, <laughs> we need some swiveling chairs. <laughs> That flips around. So she plays the video, and then when it gets to the part that gets us interested, we just turn the chair around and be like, (laughs) tiles, acrylic. No, but here's the thing. The button is attached to our account, a bank account. When we hit oh, it, we're actually and then you spending actually the buy money. It? Yeah. Oh, so it's like, that you would know, be awesome. I would there's do some that. real stakes. It would be I'd like, pop. I'd <laughs> buy that. It would be so exciting. I would say the bad point about that is between the two of us, like I'm usually interested in different stuff than her. So it would be like, back, back, back. And it would be like, cool, we've backed everything. Yeah, <laughs> we're broke. <laughs> or, or, actually, this might be a selling point. They'd never see my face again. The chair would always be this way. <laughs> and then it would just be turned. You'd be like, Greg, what, what do like, you think? Is Greg even Greg? there? Okay. Like, uh, yeah, never I, mind. I, I'm, I'm never here, mind. I'm here. <laughs> 
All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today and hanging out. We always appreciate all of your comments and everything. And checking out those Kickstarters and bringing up cool stuff stuff like and you know that we didn't catch and everything and we also had i love the chat send all yeah. your yeah. leftover awesome. candy to us um you oh. can find us <laughs> at Do you guys really need more candy <laughs> no. i'm Always. like swimming in candy i couldn't get out the front door it was just gilbert, candy gilbert's gonna ru give uh get started on his insta buy light up button on kickstarter it's like that so it's gonna be our next button, yeah, you know? our next hit it like oh yeah kickstarter easy. will be, be like backy. that was expensive <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time you hit that it was it's expensive. like you're broke <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will see you guys all later in the week. <laughs>